my name is Bob Stewart. I think you guys can see me here. I'm hunkered down, socially distanced um, in Seahawks Stadium. I'm, I'm way away from all those people behind me, but we're going to talk today about seller lead generation from seller lead to listing appointment using the Brevity platform. This is kind of an encore presentation. We did, Ben Kinney and I did this presentation for our Brevity clients uh, a week or two ago. It went over really well. So we, we invited some Brevity clients back who hadn't seen it the first time. And then invited some people that, that maybe are, are curious about kind of some of the tools that we have at our disposal inside of Brevity. So the first thing I'll show you here as we get started is this is, this is the Ben Kinney team lead generation model. And, and this is the model that we kind of built Brevity around. This idea that um, there are really five primary places that, that most real estate team's business comes from. Uh, your sphere, so past clients, referrals, stuff like that, right? Open houses, prospecting, just getting on the phones and going after it. Um, internet, so internet leads, leads from our listings. And then, you know, when you have a, a, a piece of the pie called other, we've kind of covered everything, right? For, for every market, every agent, that other you know, it, it, it means different things. And for the Ben Kinney teams, they do radio and television advertising. Um, they do events, event marketing, right? They do um, things like, uh, they get a lot of agent referrals because Ben has a decent name, right? So that other bucket, you know, there's always deals that come from that. But the Brevity platform is really built for these, these five pieces of the lead generation model. And, and we're going to go into each one of these today and kind of talk a little bit about how seller leads show up or can potentially show up. And they don't just show up, right? There's generally some effort or some focus geared towards those things to get them to show up. But we'll, we'll talk about some of the different aspects of the platform as it relates to those different, different, um, you know, sources of business. The next thing we're going to kind of touch on as we go through here is some of the different ways that we can deliver a message. And the, the idea of the Brevity platform and really your business in general, right, is, is there's a bunch of traffic, right, starting on the left-hand side of this page. There's traffic in the world. I think traditionally we think of traffic, we think like, oh, a website visitor or, you know, a, a, a click that came from my blog or Google or something. But, but when we're talking about traffic here, we're talking about everywhere that buyers and sellers are potentially hanging out, right? That might be in their house on the other side of their mailbox, it might be in their house on the other side of the door, in their house on the other side of their phone. It might be on their computer looking at, you know, a website or something. It could be them driving by our sign and, and their traffic who's coming by our listing sign. If we can create the right content and messaging to put in front of that traffic, we can potentially capture them into our database, essentially, right? We can bring them into our world and then we can attempt to, to cultivate and to nurture that relationship until they become either a buyer or a seller in our world. So some of the ways that we can deliver that message, right? We could, we could call somebody or text them. We could email them. We could send them physical mail we can deliver these messages on, on social media, right? On, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. We can do other types of marketing. Maybe, you know, maybe you, you're the guy that puts your, your little, uh, your ad on the, the shopping carts at the supermarket or on the, the bench ad or, or you do a lot of just, um, you know, billboards or, you know, your signs out in front of your listings might be considered marketing, right? Or we could just show up at their house and, and, and short of those kind of six ways, right? There's not really too many other ways that we can deliver the message, but we do want to consider like, are we delivering the right message in the right venue? Are we delivering enough times, right? Because sometimes we, we email, but we probably should have backed that up with a piece of physical mail and also called and text them. So it's not always just one method of delivering the message, but the, the, method, the message, as the message shifts, it doesn't matter. The methods of delivering the message stay consistent, right? And those are those, those different methods. So talk a little bit. This is kind of the, this is a map of what Brevity does. And, you know, the, the traffic 
is something we can help you with. We've got a leads program that can help drive traffic for you. We can help you with the content and the messaging. These tools here, we're going to go through some of these tools today and how they relate to generating or capturing seller leads, right? Ultimately, we want all our leads kind of coming into a CRM, from which point we can nurture buyers with listing alerts or auto plans. We can nurture sellers with market reports. One day, a seller from a market report is going to go, oh, hey, I see my neighbor sold for a really good price. I might want to get that price, at which point we've, we've got a CMA tool where you can easily price properties for somebody who wanted you to come out to their house and do a listing appointment. And then the end of the day, right, we've got a transaction that we have to manage and Brivity does that for you. And then high five, we get like a paycheck, right? That's what we're all in the business for. So we can help feed our families and, and put clothes on our back, right? Now, sometimes we, we've got profits in our business and we may invest that back to kind of start this whole cycle over again. So let's dive in here on, on some of the seller lead gen tools that you have at your disposal as a Brivity platform client. And the first one is just the, the homepage of your website. And look, there's a lot of variation in a Brivity client's website. You guys have the ability to customize and do different things. and and, but most of our, our customers on the homepage have kind of this, this three-step call to action, right? And we can see on there, like, I could, I could find a home or I can say, I want to sell my home or I want to get an estimate of my home. So that sell my home or that see home estimate option right there on the homepage of our website is going to be, you know, kind of the first and most obvious place that we can generate seller leads, right? And at that point, we're going to try to get that person to register if they wanted to sell their house or, or see a home estimate. That's, that's the first thing. The second kind of a little bit deeper into the Brivity platform would be um, like, uh, the second site concept. So Ben Kinney's team does this. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the larger teams in real estate have something like this where they've got their main site and in Ben's business, they have a lot of these main sites, but let's say BKT Washington. Okay, so BKT Washington is going to be a site where when you go there, it's mostly geared towards buyers, right? The main call to action when I first land there is search for listings. They do something that, that not a lot of people do, but they have a totally different site. Sellerschallenge.com is that site if you wanted to go and check it out. But what seller's challenge is, is it's an entire website dedicated to the experience of a seller. So when I land on sellerschallenge.com, he doesn't, he's not saying to me, hey, go look for houses. He's saying, hey, get my marketing plan, right? See home values. Now he gives them the ability to search listings, but the primary kind of calls to action, the primary wording, the primary messaging on that site is geared towards somebody who might be thinking about selling their home. So when they do a radio and television advertising, they, he's got like the guaranteed sold program when he runs his radio ads, they're driving those back to sellerschallenge.com because they know the person that got that message, right? That traffic, in this case, the radio listener, right? Who got that message, the message being, we guarantee we can sell your house or Ben will buy it from you. Now we don't take listings that we know we can't sell, right? But the message then matches the place we send that audience, which in this case is their seller site. If we had a message saying, hey, we can sell your house, and we sent them to a website where they had to kind of dig to find all of that good information about our marketing plan or the home value, right? That's not going to be as good as having that landing experience, sellerschallenge.com, for them be something that's totally geared around things like, and if you look on the right there, you kind of got to stick your face in really close to see it, but like, ask about our guaranteed sold program, right? That's something they market. So they want that to be kind of front and center right as I start to scroll and investigate who these guys are, right? They've got their pricing strategy on there. They talk about their innovative um, internet marketing and what they do. So they really bring to the forefront on this website all of the things that they do on their team. Their staffs are on there, right? You guys can go and check out sellerschallenge.com. Um, it's a really good example of a, of a website, a seller site focused entirely on um, 
It's funny you say that, David. What is the marketing plan in the listing presentation? Brevity Platform Clients, when you become a Brevity Platform Client, we actually give you guys Ben Kinney's listing presentation. And inside of that listing presentation is the marketing plan. So these blocks that we have on this website here, you guys can actually copy those blocks and utilize and leverage these same blocks. So if you got a seller site, we would... You know, you now have the Brevity platform. You guys have access to Ben Kinney's listing presentation. You're gonna tweak it a little bit, right? But a lot of that listing presentation is geared around the tools that we leverage inside of Brevity here. So the marketing plan and the listing presentation are something that you guys get access to as Brevity platform clients. So seller site, let's go a little bit deeper. And every site, doesn't matter if you just had one website and it was kind of a buyer site and it had seller, you know, the, Look, you have one website that has, you know, seller content in it and buyer content in it. One of the primary pieces of kind of seller lead gen content that you have on your website is your home value page. So every single Brevity platform client today, right, or if you, you're not and you became one, you have a home value page on your website. And in fact, you could have as many of these as you want. Now, what is a home value page? Well, it's just... You know, for me, it might be bobstewart.com forward slash home value, right? For Ben, it'd be, uh, you know, he's got benkinney.com, bktwashington.com, sellerschallenge.com, but all of those forward slash home value have this kind of home value concept. And you can adjust what this page looks like, the image, the words on the page. You can have video playing on this page. You can have a carousel running where it's like kind of slowly scrolling through different images when somebody lands here. You could build stuff on the bottom of this page. You know, maybe put in your, your marketing plan on the bottom of this page or, or, you know, an example of your listing presentation. You can build onto these home value page. A lot of people just have this, right? Just have what we see here on the screen, which is essentially this landing page that says, look, find out what your house is worth, right? And this Listen, people want this information really bad. Like Zillow was able to kind of come up in our industry because consumers out there want to know how much their home is worth. For most people, it's their largest asset. And if you think about a time like right now, like, look, I, I check my, uh, my Robin Hood, which is like my stock account. I check it every day, right? Because the things are moving and I want to know, like, what's that investment doing for me? People, they can go to Zillow, right? But we've got, as, a, as, a, as an industry, as an individual agent, as a team, you have to give your people, you know, your prospects, the people you'd like to be in your world, the ability to figure out and find out what's their house worth, right? So here's how these kind of work, right? They, they, they fill in their address. At the point they fill in their address, you have a lead now, okay? If they never, if they get to this page and they go, oh, no, I'm out of here, you still have a lead from somebody at an address that was curious about what their house is worth. And we'll use something like a Ben Verified, go look that person up. We'll call them with the apology script, right? That apology script might sound something like, um, hey, I'm so happy you answered. You know, I was calling to apologize because I was notified that someone had requested information on the value of their home from this address. And for whatever reason, the website failed or you didn't leave the correct contact information. So I looked you up. And I wanted to reach out quickly so you didn't think we dropped the ball. Are you considering selling your home or thinking about refinancing? Right, we do that with, with address only leads. We look them up, we call them, because look, they had a reason they went there to begin with to try to figure out what their home is worth. And by the way, what are those reasons? Uh, they were thinking about selling it. Pretty sure we can help them there, right? They were thinking about refinancing. I bet most of you on this call have somebody in your world, a lender that sends you business every once in a while, and you'd love to send them back some. Third reason, they're just curious. But look, somebody's just curious. We want them in our database. We can start to market to them. We can start sending them market reports. And it might be six months from now. It might be a year from now. It might be seven years from now. If we do the right things, that lead we generated today becomes a piece of business three years, five years, or seven years from now. The fourth reason, by the way, is they're getting a divorce and they, they want to know what half is, right? And you can help that person sell and maybe even buy twice, right? Said slightly tongue in cheek, but look, look, people come to these websites for reasons that fit really well with your business, okay? So they, if they fill this, this kind of second portion out, right? And then we've got a full lead. 
Now we've got some decisions on how, on what we show them once they, once they do this. So what, what does the consumer see, right? That there are a couple options and you, you control this. We could have an option that just shows them like this, this landing page that says, hey, we're gonna do a value on your home, it's gonna be on its way, right? No, no, no uh, automated valuation, right? We're not giving them any number. We're just saying, hey, we're gonna put together a CMA for you and we're gonna send it to you, right? It'll be there within 24 hours. And you control that messaging where it says, we'll email your report within 24 hours. Maybe you have it say, hey, uh, we'll be giving you a call shortly to get some last details so we can get you an accurate value. The second option you have is to give them kind of this range, right? This, none of the data behind it, none of the details behind it, just a simple range based on a couple of estimates that we pull in the background. And on the third option, I'll show you what those estimates look like. But, you know, maybe you're like, I don't know, like I just wanna give them something like this, something a little bit um, less specific. And then, and then in there where it says, I'm putting your full report together, I can change that wording, right? So I could have it say, you know, this is a range in order to get you a more specific number. You know, we need to get a few details about your home. The third option, which most people use this option, but look, there, there's perfectly valid reasons why you might use those other options. The third option, which is kind of the full report option, right? Gives somebody the ability to see a couple of different automated valuation estimates. So you've got the Zillow estimate and you've got this estimate from another automated valuation tool called Home Junction. Then, assuming your MLS provides sold data in an MLS feed, which these, it's becoming more and more common that they do and most of the big ones do, we also take actual sold data from your MLS and we crunch a formula together to give them an estimate on their home. So they've got three different estimates right, that we kind of pulled together into one number at the top. But beyond what you see here, so there's, there's a bunch of calls to action on this page, right? Like get the expert valuation, like get a professional one from a local real estate agent, you, right? There's even an ability on the bottom left of that page for them to like put in a number. They can say, look, if I can get 600,000 for my house today, I'd sell it. They can put 600,000 in there and hit get started. And it kind of gives you this you know, it's just continuing to go down the funnel because you have them as a lead right now. You have a lead with an address and a name and an email and a phone number of somebody that was curious about what their house is worth. But maybe they get to this page and they go, you think it's worth 555? Cool. Like I'd sell it for that right now. Right. Or they could change that and say, man, if we could get 575, we'd sell. It gets you somebody a little bit further down the funnel. Now, one of probably the favorite things I've been I've been doing real estate for 18 years. You know, we were one of the first people to grab an IDX feed from the Northwest MLS and be able to put listings on the internet and capture leads from those. We've built a lot of, built a, been a part of a lot of tools having been built for real estate agents over the year. Worked at Zillow and Market Leader and Active Rain and the Market Report tool, a very simple tool, by the way, is one of my favorite. And you have an ability on a brevity market report to actually generate leads from that. So here, what a market report is, is well, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can do these for a particular person based on where they live and their address and set it up so that we send them actives, everything currently active around their house, pending, everything currently pending around their house, and then everything sold in the last 30 days around their home. And we send these either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly for them to be updated on what the heck's going on around them. Again, Zillow is proof that people want to know what their neighbor's house sold for because it impacts their largest investment, which is normally their home, right? It impacts that home's value. Well, we can also do market reports for particular areas. So when you build a market report, you actually have an ability to say, I want to share this. And I can share it either like unrestricted, meaning I just put it out there and anybody can look at it and it doesn't matter. And if they wanted to, you know, some information, they'd have to click a call to action inside of that report to reach out to me. But I wouldn't know who was out there looking at it. The other way I can do it is I can create a market report and I can set it up on a force registration URL. So I can say, look, I'm going to do a market report, right? That I'm going to 
I'm going to run a Facebook ad against. That market report is going to be for condos, uh, luxury condos in Seattle. So I've set the report up. It'd be, you know, for the city of Seattle, it'd be for condos, and it'd be for every condo over $1.1 million. I don't know in Seattle if that's considered a luxury condo. Probably not. You can get like a two-bedroom in Seattle for that price. But, but then I'd go out, I'd take the force registration link for that, and that's what I would drive traffic to. Right? If I was going to put it on my Facebook and those people were all my friends, I might not force my friends to sign up to see a market report. Okay, so those are the kind of the, the couple tools we have, right? This ability to like let people get information about their area or an ability to give them a value estimate on their home. Now, when we get a lead like this, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to probably check the address really quick, see are they already listed? When was the last time they're listed? Who's the, uh, we're going to research the owner, right? We're gonna, in, in the Northwest MLS called Realist, we might go there and look it up and see like, does the name on that lead match the name of the owner on record, right? If not, maybe I've got somebody that just is curious about a house down the street that, that they were thinking about buying or something. Right? We're obviously going to attempt contact. We might use that apology script that I gave you before. Here's a second version of the apology script that we use when we actually get a full details lead, right? That first one I gave you is when I got an address only and then I had to go track them down on Ben Verified and find their phone number and call them. And it's kind of weird because they never left their phone number for me. But if they did leave their phone number, there's another script that we use. This sounds very, very similar, by the way. Hey, I'm so happy you answered. Listen, I was calling to apologize because I was just notified that someone had requested information on the value of their home and, the, and we gave you a range and it was pretty broad and it might not have been super valuable if you were thinking about doing something like selling or refinancing. So the reason we were missing, you know, the reason is we were missing enough details about your home to give you that really accurate estimate, right? Maybe any improvements you made, anything special about it that, that doesn't show up in the tax records. So I wanted to reach out really quick so you didn't think we dropped the ball. Before I get some additional information, let me ask you, are you thinking about selling or considering refinancing? These scripts we share kind of freely throughout, um, you know, our Brevity Mastermind group on Facebook, right? When, when we're done here, I'll give you guys my, my email address or, or um, and you can you know, send you these scripts if you want them. If you're not a Brevity client, you don't have access to the Brevity Mastermind. Right. We're going we're gonna to mail, we're, gonna, we're maybe going to show up at their house, we're definitely going to set up a marker report, and then we're going to have some kind of an auto plan that's applied to this lead. Right? Sometimes those auto plans happen right when the lead comes in, the auto plan gets applied, text messages start to go out to that person immediately, or you know, we generally give them three or four minutes before we send the first one. Hey, you requested evaluation for your home, just out of curiosity, were you guys thinking about selling? refinancing, or maybe you were just curious for your own peace of mind, question mark, right? That's the first text we send out three or four minutes after that lead comes in. That plan's gonna continue to work on that person. We're gonna do calls to them, obviously, but they're gonna get a series of texts and emails geared around this idea of we can help them determine the value of their home for whatever those needs are. Let's talk about some of the different audiences. So you've got these two tools, right? The primary one, I think, being that home valuation tool. So what are some of the audiences that you have in your world? And look, everybody has these audiences or has the potential to have these audiences, right? Your sphere, your past clients, right? That's an audience that we can market these things to, to try to find people in that sphere of our past clients who, are, who want to raise their hand, right? Our, our database, our database of buyers. And we're going to go through each one of these individually. Geographic farm, right? Open houses, right? People come into open houses often have a house to sell, right? Our listings are a great way for us to, to generate seller leads off of our listings. Again, that idea that like buyers are going to buy our listing might have something to sell. Circle prospecting, Right, our marketing dollars being spent somewhere. In Ben's case, maybe it's radio ads or, and then online advertising. So let's let's go into a couple of these things. So, Brevity leads 
is, is something, if you're a client right now with us and you're curious about how you can get more seller leads in your world, like some of the stuff we're going to talk about here next is like, you know, ideas for how you go out and generate your own. But if you're like, Hey, I'd rather somebody just do this for me. Like I don't encourage Fizbo's to sell their house on their own. So I probably shouldn't be running my own marketing campaigns when my real kind of love and passion is helping people find and buy and sell houses. Right? So if you want our team to actually run marketing for you, you can text just do it to five, nine, five, five, nine. So I know you guys all have this thing like close to you, right? You just pull it out. You send a message to five, nine, five, five, nine. And the body of that message is just do it. Now, when we run ads, or, or you might choose to go out and run these ads yourself, and we have plenty of Rivety clients that run their own ads, you know, more or less because they like to do it, right? They like tinkering around with that stuff and seeing how low they can get their cost per lead and those sorts of things. If that's not you, text just do it to 59559. But if you like to do this stuff yourself, there's really like, look, and this is across everywhere. There's really two main places people go and look, if you were going to do it with us, we're going to those same places, right? Paid Google ads and paid Facebook ads. The difference maybe between you running it yourself and us running it is we have a team of like, I don't know what it is, three or four people that just sit in a room all day. And all they do all day long is like look at a bunch of computer screens and like adjust and tweak these campaigns to try to optimize them over and over and over. These are highly effective methods for generating leads, right? And, and to be quite honest with you, Google's pretty complex. Like if you were going to try to say today, like I'm going to learn Google, it's a lot. Facebook's pretty simple. We've done webinars in the past where I've shown you even how to boost a Facebook post really fast. Like it, it takes no time at all. We also have, so there, this is a concept, retargeting is another kind of way to describe this, retargeting or remarketing. But it's this idea, and so this is one of the ways that like when you work with Grant and his team at Brivity Leads, this is one of the ways we target your past clients in your sphere to make sure they do business with you. We can also target your buyer database, right? All the leads you have in your CRM today, we can remarket to those people. And essentially what we do is we take in their data, right? We feed it to these services like Facebook and Google, and then we match those people to your ads. So they're going to go around and it doesn't matter on Fox News or CNN or ESPN or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or your local Seattle Times or the Bellingham Herald. We're going to run ads to those people so they see your reinforced message, right? And we can reinforce that you help people sell, house or sell their house and get the most money in the shortest amount of time, right? To drive people that are, you know, all the buyers in your database already that, that a bunch of those what? I mean... What are, the, what are the home ownership staffs across the United States? 60% home ownership rates, somewhere in that range, right? That means, you know, a, a large percentage of the buyers you have are going to have to sell the house they live in before they buy that next one. We should be targeting those people with ads to make sure that when they're ready to sell, it's with you. So anybody in your database, your sphere. Now, we can do this to other audiences as well. We can do this to people that come to your website and never actually sign up. And that's actually a large percentage. Like, a lot of people will come to your website, probably 80, 85, sometimes 90% of them never register. They leave. But we can drop something on their browser and then we can follow them over to the New York Times or CNN or wherever they're going after that and keep continuing to try to drive them back to you. It's all about the audience, right? And we talked about this. Anybody coming to your website, we can remarket, retarget them. Anybody inside your CRM right now, we can build custom audiences out of them and, and target those people. So let's talk about your sphere, like which tool and how do we use it? So your sphere, the number one tool for your sphere is going to be market reports, right? These market reports, look, guys, my mom is a real estate agent. She runs the Ben Kinney expansion team in Olympia, Washington. She's only been a real estate agent for, she's going on her third year, coming into her fourth year. And, you know, she had 79 transactions her first year, 85 or second year, something like that. She loves her market reports. Like at once a month, if you're in our Brevity Masterminds group, Gail Smith will like post like market report for the win or I don't know, this last well, couple of weeks ago it was Austin Keitner who runs the Toronto Ben Kinney expansion team. We call these um, come list me emails, right? 
they get our market report. They've been getting it for months, sometimes for years, right? They were some, they were an expired lead that we circle prospected two years ago. And they said, you know, we're just, some stuff changed. We're not going to be selling anymore. We couldn't get that price we wanted. We're, we're, we're on. And we say, that's awesome. Listen, one of the things, would it be of value to you if we set you up to receive a report um, once a month, once a week, or every two weeks that shows you all of the activity happening around your house, right? You do this with your sphere. You do this with your past clients. You do this with like long-term seller prospects. Once a month, my mom gets a come list me email. It'll say something like, hey, Gail, thanks so much. You've been sending us this report for like two years now. You know, we look at it every month when it comes and we'd like you to come out and talk about what you think we could get for our house. And you can go into Brevity Masterminds, like do a search for market reports in there if you're a current client and see some of those people sharing those come list me emails. So what is the proper message to get people to use it? It's not, they don't even have to really use it, right? They just have to be willing to like receive it. So the proper message is, would it be of value to you if I set you up with our technology that allows you to keep up to date on what's going on on the real estate market right around your house? Would you prefer that I send that to you weekly, every other week or monthly? Question mark, stop say nothing, make them answer. I, I have yet to hear, well, we have 32 expansion teams. I meet with these teams once a month. We talk about this stuff over and over and over. I've yet to hear one of them say, yeah, I, I said that to somebody and they were like, no, that would be of zero value to me. There's no minimum Andy on the marketing campaigns. Like if you want to run a month of lead campaign and then, and then stop, you can stop. There's a setup fee involved in the beginning, but from that point, it's month to month and you can choose to stop and start. Listen, some of our teams, they get too many leads and they know they need to get deeper and work on those leads. And they'll pause those campaigns for, you know, a month or two or three to get caught up and then restart them. So, you know, we, we work our spheres really aggressively. Okay, so we're going to be calling and texting them to, 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 to give them these offers, right? We're going to be emailing them. We're going to be sending out physical mail to them. Like we're definitely talking to them on social media, right? Now, not all of these things like make sense with all of your different types of, you know, of leads that you might have, right? Or, or audiences that you might have. Some of you guys might say, there's no way I would just go knock on somebody's door that I don't know. That's fine. And some of you are like, yeah, give me, give me address only leads all day long. I'll go knock every door in the neighborhood. I don't care. Okay, so your buyer database is, you know, one of your, like, any, you, know, you get past the point of having, like, let's say 500 people in your database. Some of you guys have 2,000, 5,000. Some of you guys probably have 20,000, right? that your buyer database is one of your most valuable places to find seller leads, right? Because again, most of these people own their house, 60% of them, right? On average. And, and a large percentage of those, it's like in the upper eighties are going to sell that house before they buy the next one. So your buyer database is, is a, is a big deal. And the tool that we're going to use is that home valuation tool, right? So we did, <laughs> I told you, I've been doing this for 18 years. One of the very first things we ever created 18 years ago was the ability to send people listings. And for 16 years, we sent them listings with no recognition that they, and I'm, I'm a moron. Like, I'll just admit, when we finally thought, like, we should do this, it was one of those, like, what have we been doing for the last 16 years? Like, duh. Every time we send a listing alert out to your buyer database, so when you become a Brevity Platform client, right, you've got a website and we send listing alerts. We encourage you to get all your buyer prospects set up on listing alerts. Even old leads, you're like, I can't even remember where this lead came from. I don't know, let's set them up on a listing alert. Inside of that listing alert, every single time we send it, we're gonna ask them, do you wanna get a free estimate of your home's value? I, we've been doing this for about two years now. I still don't think anybody else is doing this as a consistent call to action inside of that that primary piece of marketing that we send to our buyers in our, in our database. So that's the example right there on the screen, right? Your, your, 
your listing alert going out with that call to action, asking that buyer prospect in your database if they have a home to sell and if they'd like to know what it's worth. Look, when we get leads, you know, like our Ben Kinney 10 days of pain, there, there's two or three different messages in there that ask them like, hey, would you like to, like, do you own the home that you currently live in? And are you curious about, you know, what's happening around that house? Right, we'll have one that just goes out that says, hey, if, if you own the home that you live in now, you can head over here to get a value estimate on what it's worth today. Right, so texts we're sending out with that, with that call to action in it. Emails we're sending out with that call to action in it. So your geographic farm, one of the, one of the, one of the elements of ad campaigns today is you can run ad campaigns on what's called like geofencing, right? So this is an example of an ad campaign or, you know, an ad essentially that's running to a very specific audience for Jim and Yvette Blem. Right? We're, we're not even running it to their entire city. We're like geofencing it down to a particular area that they would like to farm. We can do, uh, you know, circle pros door knocking. If you guys go out, like if you're a door knocker, right, a great kind of leave behind, and I don't know what you leave, you know, you leave a, a little door hanger or you leave like, you know, a, a postcard or something, right? But if you're a door knocker, a really awesome, because look, you go knock on a bunch of doors, like it's probably pretty rare that somebody's like, oh, I'm glad you showed up today. Like I was just thinking about listing my house. Come on in, I'd love to talk to you. Like that's not what happens, right? You're basically trying to leave them with something of value so that when that time comes, when they are thinking about you, they, they call you, right? So our two options are like, listen, we, we can do a, a, a really quick valuation on your house just so you're, you're aware of what this house is worth today. Or if it'd be of value to you, we could set you up on a marker report so that you can Keep up to date, either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly with exactly what's happening around your house. Which one of those frequencies would be best for you guys? When we do circle prospecting, we have an open house in our farm area. We're going to circle prospect that area, right? Invite them to our open house. But we're also going to ask them, would it be of value to you? Right? That script, would it be of value to you if we set you up with our technology to receive information about everything happening in the real estate market around your house. Would you like to receive that weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly? All right, so if you have listings, we've got a tool inside of Brivity called Brivity Marketer, which allows you to send automated, just listed, and just sold postcards we're hooked up to the MLS. Every time you get a new listing, within minutes of it hitting the MLS, there's a campaign ready for you to send postcards out. Every time you sell a property, every time it goes to sold in the MLS, within minutes of it going to sold in the MLS, there's a campaign ready for you to send sold postcards out. So you can see what Jake did here, right? He, he, this is a sold property. They sold it for 15,000 above asking. He had four offers. And his call to action there says, you know, text virtual selling to 59559. We can bring you an offer, right? Or see what your home is worth by going to that link. And we track those links. And if somebody received his postcard and then they go to the link, every single postcard we send out has a unique URL on it that if the person goes to that URL to get a valuation for their home, we generate a lead for you right away. They don't even have to fill anything out when they land on that page. We immediately know the person who went to this link lives at one to three main street and we give you their lead. Now, if they go through and fill all the information out, you get the full boat lead. But if they don't, guess what? In our world, been verified. We're going to reach out to them. We're going to let them know our technology saw that they had gone and looked for some information about either their home's value or that listing that we just sold down the street from them. This stuff all starts to work together right? We see this emergence of like, wow, like that tool works with that tool. And you'll see he did text virtual selling. 
This is a tool you guys will have at your disposal too. It's called Quickly. I gave it to you earlier when I said, if you're curious about leads, text just do it to 59559. Here's another example, right? Click instant offer, immediate offer on your home. Like, what does he have? He's got the, 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 um, the link there, driving him back. Quickly, oh, it's one of my favorites, guys. Here's why Quickly is my favorite. Like, it's my favorite lead generation tool that we've ever put together. We, that we've ever purchased, I guess. We bought this, but um, every single Quickly lead you ever get Everyone, 100% of them are, are good. And here's what I mean. So you can create, so you can create quickly keywords. They're called instant keywords. And, and there's a whole nother side of how quickly works out at your signs where we tap into your MLS and people can get information as they drive by your properties and, and we send you their cell phone number. But what we're seeing here is the, the keyword BK value. So on Ben Kinney's team, and don't text this please because his team actually uses this and you'll, you know, so then you create a lead for them and then they've got to call you and you'll probably get set up on an auto plan. But when you text BK value, they send you back a link to one of their home valuation pages. Okay. Your neighbor's house just sold, which means your equity has changed, get a free home value estimate. So this is something where when they do just sold postcards, they say to get your home's current value, text BK value to five, nine, five, five, nine. So if somebody does that, they get this back, letting them know their neighbor's house just sold, which they know because they're looking at the postcard, right? So if they want to see what their house is worth, they can click right here, head over to Ben's valuation site, fill in their information. We've got a lead off of, you know, some piece of marketing that we did. I, I would encourage you guys, like, every piece of marketing that you have out in the physical world could potentially be enhanced by a text call to action. And I, I don't know if anybody on this call like ever works with builders. Nothing makes me more like, I don't know if I'd say irate, but it just makes me go, man, they are missing a big opportunity than driving by one of them big signs, right? I live in Kenmore, Washington, and around me there's lots of, you know, these kind of 10 or 12 home little subdivisions that go up, uh, you know, all over the place, right? And the, the, they always get like a big sign, right? And the sign will have the arrow like pointing up the road to where the development is. It'll be at like a main intersection and it'll have like a phone number there for me to call. So when we do these on the Ben King team, our Vancouver team recently represented a builder, right? They were going to have that sign out there for months while that, while those units were getting stood up. So their, their call to action didn't say, hey, call us. Like, and a lot of times it's like, just, there's just a phone number. They don't tell you why to call, right? It'll say like, from the 500,000s, 206, 555, 1212. Like, okay. So we put on those signs um, to see the current price, just to get the current pricing and see all the floor plans, text Fairwood Greens to 59559. Every piece of your physical marketing could, could have a text call to action on it. Because what are the potential calls to action on a piece of physical marketing? Phone number, website address, QR code, I don't know, right? Text. The, the, the percentage of people that would rather text you than call you is really high. Really, really high. And if the message promises something they want to know how much the, the, you know, these new houses are going to be priced at, right? To see all the floor plan options so they can figure out if there's any options that have the master bedroom on the main floor or whatever, right? They're much more likely to text than they are to pick the phone up and call you to get the price. All right, open houses. You know, we can't, you guys can't do, I mean, a lot of you guys can't do traditional open houses right now, right? And maybe there'll be a day in the future before too long, hopefully, where you can go back to doing these. But listen, we have virtual open house, kind of this virtual open house like package where you can create virtual open house registration pages and we can get people to come in and sign in on those. Now, if you were doing normal open houses, which we will be again someday, right? When we have people sign in, 
we ask them during the sign-in process, like, do you, cur- do you own the home that you currently live in, right? It's another way for us to get people that have come into our world who might potentially have something to sell to kind of raise their hand a little bit. Now, <laughs> we, use, we, have a, we have a script that we use in a lot of places, right? People normally come to my website for one of two reasons. They're curious what their own home is worth or they're thinking about buying and trying to find a perfect place. Which one are you? People come to our open house for one or two reasons. They're curious what their own home is worth or they're thinking about buying and trying to find that perfect home. Which one are you? People text on our, on our signs normally for one of two reasons. They're curious what their own home is worth or they're a buyer trying to find that perfect home. Which one are you? One of the things that we talk a lot about in our business is like sim- we overcomplicate things to justify our inaction, right? So we don't learn a script because we think I got to learn 20 scripts and I got to have a script. Listen, no, we just take a very simple script and we use it in a lot of places. That's how you build like a really big business and you get people on your team to be bought into these things. You give them stuff that's digestible and easy. So in your prospecting, right, you've, you've, I mean, if you're going circle prospecting on expireds or cancels, like I saw, this, I saw this yesterday. I do a lot of audits with different Brevity clients. I do them with Ben Kinning teams. And I saw yesterday a lady who for the last six months has been really putting in some effort on canceled and expireds. And she had a ton of leads. There were probably 50 leads that she in the last couple of months had like brought into the database, like warm nurtures. Right, so she'd, she'd done the, the, the effort on the phone, she'd gotten them in there, and she only had like four of them set up on a market report. And I was like, Sarah, how come, you, like, what's different about these four than these other 46? And she's like, I, you know, I, I think just the conversation got a lot further and they said something that made me think, oh, I could send them a market report. And I'm like, yeah, but all of these people could benefit from it, right? And so we worked with her. Now we, we turned her kind of pitch to them, right? If she can't get back in there for another listing appointment or they're not going to list it soon, she'll say, would it be of value to you if we set you up on our technology that keeps you updated on the market right around your house, showing you everything active, pending, and sold, including the prices of what stuff sells for around you? Would you like to get that report weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly? You see how I transition from like, would it be a value to you, couple, like this middle carrier, to like, which one do you want? Sarah is going to, she's going to change the dynamic when she does her prospecting, because what she was always looking for before was like an appointment. Right? But we know a lot of contacts that we have turn into nurtures, and if we nurture them appropriately, they'll be business in the future. Too often, we're just looking for that business today, right? A lot of this is talking about that business in the future, that how to build kind of over a long period of time a business that has a lot of listing inventory, a lot of prospects, a lot of people getting our market reports, a lot of people looking to us as the expert on the market in our area. Leverage your existing marketing. I basically already talked about this, this idea that like everything you do could potentially have a call to action. And look, we're always thinking in our world, should it have a buyer call to action? Should it have a seller call to action? Should it have a recruiting call to action? Should it have an investor call to action? And not in that order, buyer, seller, um, investor, recruits. So like when we do events, for example, we do events, um, at events, we'll like, we do this thing called the food truck rally. And at the food truck rally, we use quickly to give away a prize, right? $500 gift card to a local restaurant or something. And when people come by and they want to win something, they text it. Now we've got their phone number. Then we send them a form where we ask them to give us their information to win the something, the $500 gift card, right? And then we've got a series of questions at the bottom. Are you considering buying a new home in the next 12 months? Yes or no? The buyer call to action. Are you considering 
or do you own your current home and are you curious the, the current value of that home? Yes or no, sell or call to action, right? Have you, have you ever considered investing in real estate as a path to retirement? Investor, call to action. Have you ever considered a career in real estate, right? We're always trying to find great new people to join our organization. So your existing marketing, I, I encourage you to take a look at it and just does it have the right calls to action? Or does it have a text call to action? I mean, if you're a Brevity platform client already, you guys have quickly. I want to do this. Um, we, we talked about this already, right? We get that lead. We're going to check the address, research the owner info. We're going to try to call them. We're going to use the apology script. Here, I'll give you guys those two apology scripts right now. Um, here... Let me go into chat here and we'll send this out to everybody. So this is going to be, there's two scripts in here. Oh, I think this happened to me last time. These are too big to paste in. So let me do the first one. Here's the apology script for valuation only leads. Okay. And here's the, or here's the apology script for, you know, full leads, right? Full valuation leads. Yeah, I mean, any leads we get in our world, they're going to get market reports. Our, sometimes we set our buyer leads up on market reports. Why? Well, every day we send them new listings from the listing alerts, right? And then once a week, we, let's say that they'd come in on, on Gail's website. They were looking at Olympia at a $350,000 house. So we're going to set them up on a listing alert in Olympia from three hundred dollars to 400000 We're not even going to try to talk. I mean, we're going to try to talk to them. But even if we don't, they get a listing alert, three hundred dollars to 400000 they looked at a $350,000 home in Olympia. Then we set them up on a marker report where once a week they get sent a marker report for the city of Olympia for residential homes between 300 and 400,000. Why do we do that? Well, every day we want to show them the new listings. And then once a week, we want to show them what's happening in the market they'd like to buy into. So, oh, remember that house that we sent you on Wednesday? Well, when your market report showed up on Friday, that house was pending already. Next time we send you a house that you really like, you probably shouldn't wait very long to reach out to us, right? That market report reinforces what's happening in that market they'd like to live in. It's a really great concept to marry a market report with a listing alert on buyers. But every single seller prospect, every person in our sphere who owns their home, every, every past client is set up on seller lead or on, on uh, market reports. Right? It's the number one way to nurture a seller, to nurture your, your sphere, to nurture a past client. We've got the Brevity CMA tool in here. It's based on the 555 method of pricing properties. It hooks into your MLS. It kicks out a really beautiful CMA that you can either print out and, and mail, you know, print out and, and take with you, or you could email it to them, or you could just pull it up on your computer and go through it at the listing appointment when the price discussion comes up, hopefully at the end. You, you go in there and pull five actives, five pendings, five solds. You can even do off-market properties, right? So maybe you wanted to pull in a couple off-markets that expired at a price point that you're like, if you list at this price point, you're going to be just like this guy. You're going to be expired six months from now. Again, online or you can print them. All right, deep breath. Listen, if you're, a, if you're currently not a client and you're curious about, about the platform, and there, there's some stuff, well, I didn't talk anything about transaction management, you guys. We have a thing called Brivity Designer that allows you to create really awesome designs, super easy for your marketing. Okay, text platform to 59559. You could go to brivity.com and hit request a demo. Or if you text platform, that little, that handsome man you see there next to me, his name's Tim. He'll get that. He'll know you texted. He'll give you a call. Listen, Andy, if you reach out to me at bob at benkinney.com, I can answer that very specific question about uh, that, that you're, answer, you're asking here. Um, postcard can be customized to your branding colors. Yeah. Yeah. You can add your logo and then you can pick the, the color scheme that you want to use for the postcards. Andy, absolutely. 
no minimums on the on the the advertising. Just got my vehicle. Look, um, uh, Todd says, can you change the image on the postcards? That's a good question, Todd. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, seems like you should be able to, but maybe not. It might just be taking the, the kind of that primary first image out of the MLS. But that's a great feature uh, request in the future. What other question? Anybody have questions? You know, if, if, so somebody asked about a minimum. Robert said, I'm pretty sure the minimum is 500 bucks a month for Brevity Leads advertising. Um, in, in many markets, that's the case. There are kind of smaller markets. Like, I don't know if you were in like Ames, Iowa, um, 300 a month might be the minimum, but like if you're in Seattle or Denver or Dallas or, you know, any of the, the major metros, probably the top 30 major metros, like 500 is going to be the, the floor on that. All right. I appreciate you guys coming and, and spending some time with me. My name's Bob Stewart. Uh, you can, you guys email me. If you guys have a question, I didn't get a chance. It's Bob at Ben Um, if you're interested in the platform text platform to five, nine, five, five, nine, if you're, if you're a leads customer from before you want to be, you want to schedule a consultation with grant just to talk about the minimums in your area. Um, you know, whatever questions you might have, it's text, just do it to five, nine, five, five, nine. Appreciate you guys taking a little bit of time today with us. Um, Stay safe, wash your hands on behalf of Tim and Mikey and Samantha who make these things happen behind the scenes. James, who's been in there mixing it up with you guys and answering some questions. My friend, Jake. My name's Bob Stewart. You guys have an awesome rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs>